Blade is arguably the most overpowered status effect in Elden Ring. Weapons like the Cross Naginata and Rivers of Blood have been really strong since the launch of the game. But there is a subsection of tools that apply bleed to enemies that could be considered the worst overall tools to go into a boss fight with. I am of course referring to the Thorn Sorceries. While doing research on what character would be applicable for using blood magic, Scarlet from the Mortal Kombat series was an obvious choice. So for this run, I will be allowed to use the Thorn Sorceries to deal damage to bosses, and to make my life just a smidge easier, I will also be allowed to use Blood Flame Incantations, because they fit the character way too much. I will not be using any conventional bleed weapons, as it would make the entire challenge way too easy. Unlike my other Mortal Kombat related challenge runs for Elden Ring, I will be allowed to use the Crimson Flasks to heal myself over the course of the boss fight, since Thorn Sorceries do self damage and are slow, like really slow. Other than that, I will need to defeat all the shot bearers, and I will not be allowed to use any summons. With the quick entry out of the way, let's get to it. To say that the start of this run was confusing as hell is to say nothing at all. Usually, whenever I do a particular challenge run, I have somewhat of an idea of where I need to go and what to acquire which wasn't the case this time around. So first things first, this is going to be a hybrid build with Faith and Arcane as the main stats, and it just so happens that the staff of the Guilty, dropped by some of the Fire Monks, fits this build quite well, although it is on the weaker side in terms of staves in this game. Later on, I got both Bell Bearings to upgrade the staff, and somehow, miraculously, managed to get the Knight's Cavalry at Lena's Rise to fall off a cliff, which I wasn't really expecting that it would work, but it did, and I was all too happy about that. With that out of the way, I then acquired the Golden Scarab Talisman to boost the number of runes that I get from killing enemies, farmed up the Red Main Soldier Surcoat, and bought the Warrior's Greaves and Gauntlets, all in the name of Soul's Passion. I then acquired the Flux Canvas Talisman to future use, got a few more smithing stones, and killed Grail for the much needed levels. This entire setup took me about 5 or 6 hours to complete, which is far longer than the usual 2 to 3 hours. Margit took me a solid hour and a half to beat, due to how clunky these Thorn Sorceries are. Finding the proper windows of attack is difficult enough for me with my usual weapons, but this... this was just a nightmare. With Margit down, I completed Roderica's questline to get the Crimson Hood, which would go well with the rest of the outfit, and decided to get both the Crimson Burst tier and the Blessed Dew Talisman to hopefully counteract some of the self-damaging properties of the Thorn Sorceries. Round 1. Fight! With that done, I went in to fight Godric, which went about as well as you would expect. Like, for real. What's the point of using these sorceries in this state? They're slow, do mediocre amounts of damage, and they're just clunky as hell to use. Sure, they apply bleed, but by the time you get the chance to damage the boss after a few hits with the thorns, all of the bleed buildup will dissipate. So, uh, yeah. Round two, fight. With Godric out of the way, Vare then moved to Liornia, where I was able to complete his questline to get access to the Mogrim Palace farm, then I went over to the Volcano Manor to grab the Earth Tree Seal, which I would use quite a while later. I then grabbed some upgrades for it and went in to fight Radan, which was, um, uh, something. Round 1. Fight!
With Verdon out of the picture, I was able to complete Celewis's questline to get the Magic Scorpion Talisman, as Thorn Sorceries deal magic damage, even if it doesn't look like it. Moving on to the Draconic Tree Sentinel, who I was able to beat on like the 28th try, and moved on over to the sewers in Lane Dell, where I got Moog's Shackle for the mini Moog fight to make my life less miserable, defeated this guy to get the Lord of Blood Exaltation, defeated Gold Godfrey, and moved on over to Morgoth. Round 1. Fight! In the mountain tops, I finally breathed some variety into this build by acquiring the long-range option of the Briars of Sin, Briars of Punishment, and with it, I was able to beat Sewer Moak to grab the Bloodflame Talons Incantation. I mean, I got the stuff. Fighting Rinala with sorceries wasn't the best idea, which is why I needed the talents. With that, I was able to respec and, get this, manage to beat the fire giant without getting hit a single time. Was that unexpected? Yes. Was that cool? Hell yes! Was that intentional? Hell no. The giant didn't land a single hit on me, but I still received damage from the foreign sorceries, but I think it still checks out as a flawless victory. Scarlet wins. Flawless victory. Niall was surprisingly easy with this build, even if I did get tossed around a bunch by him. Since I now had the consecrated snowfields at my disposal, I got the Rotten Duelist set as my final look for this run, and acquired the Graven Mass Talisman. I then defeated the three avatars to get some Physic Tears, which would help me boost my damage output, which I definitely needed that. At this point, I got to fire Mazula and got myself into yet another Godskin duo fight, which I was uh, uh, very excited about. So the basic gist of the strategy against them was to make as much distance between me and them and to use the Briars of Sin on the Noble, attempting not to disturb Skinny too much, as the Noble is arguably the easier of the two, and the rest was quite easy. That is, on paper. It still took me a decent amount of time to pull off a win. Following up on the Godskins was Malakel, 
who, weirdly enough, was really fun to fight with this build. He's got some solid openings which I could punish, and I didn't spend nearly as much time on Malekith as I was expecting I would have, beating him on my third attempt. Sir Gideon Afnir, the all-knowing, that's it, he wasn't that big of a threat. Moving on to Melania, another surprisingly easy fight as she is unable to dodge bars of punishment for some reason. Now, it's not to say that it's bad, I actually quite enjoyed this little moment cause after almost 17 hours of suffering, I really needed a confidence boost. Moving on from that, I went all the way back to the starting area of the game to grab the Dragon Communion Seal because of its arcane scaling, completed Millicent's questline up until I could get the Fox Canvas Talisman from Gallery, and moved on over to Milg. He was... difficult, to say the least. His phase 1 was a non-issue thanks to the Brides of Punishment, but for phase 2 that strat worked 60% of the time all of the time, cause Milg could easily close gaps with his charging attack and do solid amounts of damage at that. With Moog dead, I finally got the last piece of the puzzle of the Bloodborne incantation and moved over to Godfrey. Round one, fight. Now, I said once that no matter the build I would still enjoy fighting him. That still stands. I did enjoy this boss fight.
Radagon and the Elden Beast both were a massive pain in my rear. More so Elden Beast due to all of the random stuff that it could pull at any minute. But the main thing is that Radagon is weak to fire, and Blood Boon and Blood Flame Talents both deal fire damage, which was a nice bonus. Yeah, I, I am not fighting Rikard with this build. Not a chance. Scarlet wins. If you wanna try out a similar build, and I don't know, Chief, I don't know why in the world you would subject yourself to such torture, then here are the stats with the talismans for PvE and for PvP. This build is absolute ass. It has 4 spells at its disposal, Briars of Sin and Punishment, Blood Boon and Blood Flame Talents. One spell is absolute garbage, two are mediocre at best, and we have one that is good all around. So make of that what you will. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching, have a good one, peace.